Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to my review of the <laughs> complicated name here. TOZ Pencala Rex EMI 101, which is a fountain pen made in Croatia by a company formerly known as Moster Pencala, which I reviewed last week. Uh, I will warn you ahead of time, if you would like to not watch this video, this does wander into some dark territory, and I know some of you don't like when I wander into politics, but this story inherently wanders into politics. So, if you're not into that kind of thing, you have been warned. So, meanwhile, let's dive into what is a very nice pen, despite the dark story that's coming. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And if you'd like to talk about the uh, darkness around this pen, or perhaps you know where Toes Pencala has headed in recent history, I would welcome some comments down below. So let's take a look at it. So last week I talked about a Moster Pencala. It was a 1930s fountain pen. It's not here because I emptied it out and washed it. Um, but I, I talked to you about Edward Pencala, who was one of the founders of the company. He was a prolific inventor, um, had Croatia's first airplane. He uh, settled in Zagreb, Croatia, and uh, founded a company with uh, Edmund Moster, uh, a Jewish businessman, and his brother, sorry, I can't remember his brother's name, Marvo, Mavro. I can't read my own handwriting. Anyway, um, and then... Uh, you know, admittedly, there. if you read my links down below here in the video description, there's some exaggeration of uh, Edward Pencala's uh, inventiveness. But uh, he, he is rightfully a Croatian hero, uh, a, a figure to look up for and uh, look up to in history. He died in 1922 at age 50 of pneumonia. But the company continued on under the guidance of the Moster family. Now, the Mosters, of course, were businessmen. Uh, they provided the financial backing to... Uh, excuse me, Edward pa Pencala's uh, inventiveness. And actually, uh, Edmund Moster has three inventions of his own to his name. I mean, nothing compared to the 80, but uh, he hit uh, improvements in the refill of lead pencils. Remember, last week I said that that's where uh, Moster Pencala kind of got its start. Uh, it was a lead pencil invented by... Edward Pencala. No, he did not invent the fountain pen, although you'll hear that claim in Croatian media. Heels for shoes and boots, which must be something, and uh, bottle closures. So he owned, he and his brother owned 66.6% .6 of the company. Edward Pencala owned the other 33.3%. I don't know who owned the other 0.1%, but it could be a rounding error. Uh, he, he was from a Jewish family with nine siblings. And uh, even long after Edward Pencala's death, he continued to run the company quite successfully. It was pointed out to me that the SW68 in last week's pen was a postal code for the German factory. Yes, they had a factory in Zagreb, Croatia, and they had a factory in Berlin, Germany. That was the postal code for that German factory. So, very cool. Uh, he, he really built that company up. They, they uh, were quite big in the south kind of the southern European market. But anyway, I, I when I concluded last week, I mentioned that this ends with a very dark history. And here's where the darkness comes in. If you know European history, you knew what was coming next. The rise of the Nazi government in Germany. And their expansion into neighboring countries. Uh, in some countries, they directly took over. In other countries, they installed a puppet government. Uh, in Croatia, they installed a puppet government. Uh, in some of these countries, these puppet governments would run concentration camps, and Croatia was one of those places. I uh, will mispronounce the, the uh, name of this camp. I just, I don't know, I couldn't quite bring myself to look, to look up how to pronounce it, but uh, Edmund Molster was uh, arrested. He died in the Jasenovac concentration camp in 1942. Uh, you'll find a link down below about that. Um, so that was the end of this inventive team that founded the Moster Pencala Company. Now, you may notice in the name for this video, I didn't call this uh, Ed, a uh, Moster Pencala. 
I don't know why the Moster name was dropped. I've got my suspicions. You can probably guess what my suspicions are. I told you I'd get political here. But uh, I don't have any real reason to believe this. So I will just say that uh, after the war, um, Croatia was no more. It was absorbed into a larger country called Yugoslavia. If you're my age or older or even a bit younger, you probably remember the breakup of Yugoslavia because it was quite big news for several years due to the violence involved. But uh, it was nationalized. <clears throat> the uh, TOZ in the names, I'm sorry, stands for Zagreb Pencil Factory, which doesn't sound like TOZ. Well, that's because that's the English language translation. And, and I'm sorry, I didn't do the pronunciation, although I should have done it for this. Uh, Tvornika Olav Olavaka Koinor Zagreb. That's what TOZ stands for. Apparently the Koinor isn't part of the TOZ. And uh, this particular pen dates from the 1960s. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to leave my notes here close because I want to refer back for a couple more things. Uh, one of the things of note here, which I'm working on, is the Rex on the clip band. Or I'm sorry, the cap band. I uh, don't know what the Rex means, but I went a little crazy and spent $60 this week. Uh, ordering more of these pens from this brand. I can't remember if it was three or four, but uh, obviously you can get these at a fairly low cost if that's what I'm spending. Uh, some elbow grease will be required. They won't be in the condition that this one or the last week's pen was in. Uh, but I saw Rex Pen was a name that came up. I also know Koinor is a name that will come up sometimes too when you search Yugoslavian fountain pens. Uh, EMI 101, my intelligent guess, and I've got good reason for guessing that, is that is a model number. Blind cap. Nothing on the finial there. Nothing on the finial here. Just one of those slim black pens that I like so much. If I uncap it, yes, it is almost empty. I'm and I have enough ink left for this video. If not, through the magic of video editing, I will refill it. Which would be such a crying shame to have to write with it even longer. That was a little sarcasm. The nib is kind of interesting. It is actually a Bach nib. I didn't understand that at first. It's a Bach nib made by Peter Bach in Germany, 1960s. And what, what a spectacular nib you're about to see. So let's take a look at this wonderful, wonderful pen from the 1960s. I think you can see why I'm concerned whether I'm going to have enough ink left to do this review, because this is a very wet, very flexible pen. Very impressive pen. The ink in it is Califolio, which I think you've been seeing a lot of that lately in my reviews. Inti which uh, it's a French brand and supposedly fairly friendly for vintage pens. Uh, no question. Flex. In fact, uh, I bought this from my Uber pens. They advertise it as being anywhere between an extra fine to a triple broad. I uh, am uncomfortable pushing pens to their limits. But let's just do a brief, because you can see the flex there. Let's just do a as lightly as I can do it. I could almost be convinced that's an extra fine. Wetness and flow. I don't think that's open to any question. This is a very, very, very wet pen. Uh, the smear test. Uh, kissing the paper. Wet. <laughs> I told you that was going to happen. I'll be back. This is probably a little unfair because it's freshly filled, but it's hardly an objective test anyway. Very wet. Full flex. And 
reverse writing. Scratchy. Gross. And extra fine, which is fine. All right, let us dive into a longer form quote. And by the way, I am feeling like the ink may have aged a bit in the pen because it's the same ink, but it definitely, the color looks a bit different. For whatever that's worth to you or to me. Uh, I was looking for a suitable quote, uh, and I've also had a request for a Carl Sagan, and I think I found a good match here. While I do the Pierre Gustafson test on this pen, I'm just going to give you a little bit more information on the company. Um, I don't have a lot, but one of the links you will find down below is to the company website. Yes, they still exist. Now, as far as I could tell, don't expect to find pens like this on the website. Uh, expect to find, you know, more typically modern pens, maybe some lower cost pens. Uh, what I read here is that uh, the company went bankrupt in 2015, but uh, came back in 2016, and as near as I can tell, is still a going concern. Uh, at some point, uh, I didn't write the date down, but a descendant of uh, Mr. Penkala actually was uh, part of the company. So uh, they, they still exist, which I think is amazing. Uh, they survived a war, they survived nationalization, they survived bankruptcy, and they're still going. Um, I can't make any intelligent comment about the quality of their modern pens. Although I'm curious, uh, what I am told, don't know if this is true, this is apocryphal, um, if you go to Croatia, Serbia, that general area, and look for a pe fountain pen in the store, you I am told that you don't ask for a fountain pen, you ask for a pen kala. <clears throat> Which I think would be a legacy I would be happy with. <laughs> uh, very nice pen, a uh, little bit of dark history there, but you knew that was coming uh, as soon as you knew the area and the time where this this pen manufacturer was located. Uh, to this day, they're still located in Zagreb, Croatia. I'm pretty sure that the Berlin factory is long gone. I couldn't find any information about it. Couldn't find any information about what happened to it during the war, but uh, Jewish business owner, what do you think? So, uh, all in all, very impressive brand. And again, Part of the fun for me is the history of these pens. Here is a tangible piece of Cold War history. Uh, last week I had a tangible piece of pre-World War II history uh, with a whole story to go with it. And uh, often, if you're willing to search out these uh, lesser known manufacturers, you get some pretty amazing surprises. Yeah, I paid a bit of a premium on this pen. Uh, MyOberPens.com is fully restores their pens and they restore them beautifully and they really try for new old stock. That doesn't come cheap. But I just told you I just bought three or four more Pencalas for uh, $60. So we'll see. I don't know what condition they're all going to arrive in. Some One or two of them may end up just being parts. But uh, that is... Uh, a neat way to get into vintage fountain pens. So, if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, and even get into their history when applicable, I would invite you to subscribe. And if you'd like to talk about this pen, or the history, 
or uh, perhaps bring up added information. Perhaps fill me in on what Rex pen is or the Rex on this pen or uh, how Koinor fits into this whole ball of wax. I, I would love for you to have your comments. I am trying. Um, I can't always find the information I want. So I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.